All right, can you guys also do me a huge favor and mute your lines? Because I don't want to be that person. That'd be so fab. All right, so guys, my name is Alyssa Shoemaker. First of all, welcome all of you guys that are here. I'm so excited. I feel so honored to be able to share with you guys, to be a part of this mastermind. So incredible. I believe collaboration over competition 100%. I've been a Beachbody coach now for seven and a half years. And before I became, became a coach, I was a registered nurse. So that's why we're going to get a little bit nerdy and scientific with you guys today, because I think it's so cool to talk about mindset, but I want to talk a little bit about why, and why mindset is so important and how our minds work. So uh, we're going to talk a little bit about mindset. We're going to talk a little bit about quantum physics today. Um, so if you guys want to get out your pens and paper, go ahead and do that, okay? And just know you guys can listen to this again because there's going to be a lot of information. And so you might want to come back and listen to it again, okay? All right, so let's get nerdy. So psychologists say that in our mid-30s, our identities are completely formed, Ah, I'm 43 guys, all right? So that means for those of us that are over 35, we have memorized a select skill set of behaviors that are subconsciously running our programming, okay? This means, you guys, that day in and day out, a lot of us are thinking the same thoughts, we're having the same feelings, we're exhibiting the same behaviors, and therefore we are living in the same reality, okay? When this happens, we are no longer in control of our conscious minds. Our body is now what is in control, okay? So, grab with me, I see a lot of women on here, all right? So my mamas, picture yourself driving the minivan, and if you're not a mom, you guys can totally picture my story, right? Mom, driving in the car, Somehow, mom is able to navigate the traffic, right? She's also able to break up the arguments behind her, sip on her cup of coffee, bend down, pick the bottle up off the floor, and yet still make it to the right destination all at the same time, right? Why is this happening? This happens because of the fact that mom is running on autopilot, okay? In fact, when the body has memorized a thought or an action or a feeling, this is really what becomes ingrained in our minds, okay? We are living in a state of memory within our actual selves, okay? So if 95% of who we are by the age of 35 is a set of involuntary programming, that means we friends are walking around 95% of our days in an unconscious state. Is that wild or not? Like, is that just like blow your mind away? So if we want to expand and we want to create a new life, then we really have to create a new personality. Okay. And to be able to observe, to do this, we need to observe and disconnect from who we are to bring about a new level of awareness. So let's think about the brain as a computer. You have your software and you have your hardware. Your hardware is the physical functioning and the resurfacing, okay? The constant programming, this is our software. These are the things that we repeat daily in our lives, okay? These are the different occurrences that, are, that really shape our habits of who we are. Most of us have had some kind of trauma in our lives that live with the scar that we have that results in this feeling every single day. And so for us to be able to create new and to bring new things into our lives, it's really important that we start to clean out this part of our brain structure so that we can have more healing, okay? Of course, you guys know you guys are health and fitness coaches. So you guys know that eating healthy, movement, brain nutrients, things like that are really critical for our brain working the way that we need it to work. But our moment to moment thoughts either exert a very powerful healing effect on our brains or they can work in our detriment. 
The same is true for any past experiences that we have. They consistently wire the brain. So every day we get to choose what kinds of thoughts, what kinds of feelings, and what kinds of emotions we're bringing into our lives. And so until you can break free and really start to see yourself in this new reality, it's really hard for us to change. It's always gonna be haphazard and it's always going to be transitory. We really have to overhaul our complete thinking process to endure a different kind of outcome. And as you guys know, most humans fuck it change, right? How many times do you have to convince somebody that they have to change, right? It isn't until most times that somebody has a traumatic event that occurs in their life that they actually make the changes. And so my message to you guys today is why wait? Why wait to hit rock bottom to change your life when you can change your life today? You can start examining the thoughts and the emotions and the things that come into your life and have an introspective observance on them so that you can start to be the creator of your destiny. Now, like clay, the infinite possibilities are shaped by our minds. So you guys gotta hang with me here, right? All matter is created by energy. Matter and mind are entangled. Our mind has effects on energy because our consciousness is energy. And energy has consciousness. So at a basic level, we as humans are mindful matter, okay? So what we communicate with within our environment is what we are going to get back, is what we are going to receive from the field around us, all right? So your thoughts are energy. And as you guys know, electrical impulses are sent out from the brain, all right? They're collected or you guys can monitor them using EEGs, all right? And this is the primary way that we communicate with our surroundings. We communicate with our heart center and we communicate with our brain. These are the electrical impulses that communicate with the field around us, all right? So I find it really useful to think as thoughts as the electrical charge and feelings as a magnetic charge. The thoughts that we think will send out an electrical charge into the field and the feelings magnetically draw these things back to us. Together, how we think and how we feel creates our state of being, okay? So this should really prompt us to ask ourselves, what am I broadcasting out on an hourly basis? Knowing that our feelings and our thoughts do create our reality, it's really important for us to be paying attention to the thoughts and to our feelings that go through our minds, okay? When we have any kind of negative emotions, our heart becomes erratic, disorganized. When people have positive emotions, our heart has a very co coherent pattern, okay? So I wanna share with you guys really quickly this little test that was done and I thought that it was just really cool because how many of you guys do a ton of positive reading every day or maybe do your 10 minutes of personal development like a good beach body coach is supposed to, but you're not seeing the changes that you wanna see in your life. Is there anybody out there like that? Powers of power of thinking, but you're not seeing the changes in your life, put your hands up, okay? And the reason why is because based on this study, you guys, you can't just have a thought. You can't action. just have the emotion. To create change in our life, we have to have thought, and we have to have emotion. And how they demonstrated this is they took a glass of water and they had people that were really, really, can I get meat from you? They had people that were really in tune with this process. And the first group of people, they took a cup of deionized water and they spoke over that cup, positive emotions and love. When they went and they looked at those DNA strands, there was no change in the DNA strands. The second group of individuals went 
And they set an intention, meaning they visualized, they sent an intention into the water. And again, there was no change in the DNA. Now, the third group, they set a vision with their intention and they set feeling and emotion for two minutes over the water. And guess what happened? After two minutes, the DNA had unraveled 25% from positive emotion and visualization. So feelings of thoughts and appreciation, feelings of love and emotion, they did change the DNA. So only when people have a heightened emotion and a clear objection can we really become in alignment with the things that we want to achieve, okay? A thought has to have an energizer to become a catalyst. The heart and the mind have to work together. Feelings and thoughts have to be in unified. This is the state of being. When our hearts are in alignment with our brains, this is when we are in alignment. If two minutes of positive thought and emotion can unwind DNA, what does that say about our actual reality? Do you guys think it would be maybe beneficial to put like an alarm on your phone to see like how you're feeling or to change up your state hourly, right? If we know two minutes of positivity and love and emotion change the DNA strand 25%, imagine what you could do in your own life if you were consistent with these things. So for us to experience change, we have to have a new income in our lives. We have to think, we have to feel, and we have to act a different way. We have to replace the things that no longer serve us, and we have to become somebody else. And to do this, we have to change the energy in our lives. You have to change your mind and your emotions, okay? So quantum creating only happens when our thoughts and our feelings are in alignment. Okay, and I'm gonna teach you guys some things that you guys can do to get in alignment, all right? But hold clear focused thoughts on purpose accompanied by emotional entanglement. That is the process of manifestation. So if you've ever wondered what manifestation is and think it's this like weird woo woo thing that people really don't understand or put it out there, I just gave you guys what the scientific approach of manifestation is and how you can use it to start to start to bring forth these things into your life. Now, I'm gonna tell you a story about my grandma. You guys might be able to relate. I got an old Italian grandma that came over on the boat and they really didn't have any money at all. She was a very religious woman, so she prayed a lot, but she had a lot of hard things happen in her life. And so no matter how much she prayed and no matter how much she wanted things to change in her life, she had these feelings from her past that would not allow her to manifest this new stuff into reality, all right? So if you really want to become wealthy or you really want to become any of these new things, then you have to get rid of any of these feelings of lack, any of these feelings of your poor, and to really start to focus on how to bring in more abundance into your life. Thoughts are the language of the brain. Feelings are the language of the body. When your mind is in a position with the body, this is when we are in a flow, okay? So, to recreate something new, we have to change the way we think and we feel every day. We have to repeat the same thoughts and feelings every day to create the new people. Wait, come out from your people, Bible. I don't know what she said about Bible. She just screwed me up. Okay, so we have to, we must, we must think and we must act and we must change out of a state of being, okay? So neuroscience has proven that to change our brains just by thinking different, through a mental rehearsal, such as repeating imagery, the circuits in our brains will actually change, okay? So we can make our thoughts, we can make our thoughts 
we, wait, we can make our thoughts really change our brains by taking engage in some physical activity. To change our brains, there's four different things that have to happen. Number one, you have to learn knowledge. So you have to make synaptic connections. Number two, you have to receive hands-on instruction. So body involved in experience. Three, you have to pay attention. And number four, you need repetition, okay? So now I'm gonna give you a couple of things that you can do to help put this into process. Number one, to create the new self, you have to stop being your old self. You have to have the power to observe your own thoughts and your own self. We can decide how we no longer want to be, think, act, and feel. And the ability to self-reflect allows us to be able to examine our thoughts and our minds and then be able to make a plan to produce a more enlightened outcome. Your attention is where you're going to place your energy. So pay close attention to your thoughts. Become aware because the more attentive that you are, the more conscious you become, and the more conscious you become, ultimately, the more that you awaken from your unconsciousness. As a result, you're no longer just the thoughts, actions, or the emotions, and you continue to build on new neural pathways and not reaffirming the old, okay? So the first thing you guys have to do is you have to, you have to reaffirm yourself. The first thing you have to do is you have to become somebody new, okay? The second thing that you're gonna do is I want you to think of the qualities of the person that you wanna possess, okay? So this ideal person, your higher self, what are those qualities? I want you to write down what those qualities are just by completing that assignment, your brain is going to start to look for different answers, okay? I want you to reflect on what it feels like to be happy. I want you to reflect on what it feels like to bring joy. I want you to envision a new you. So we all know what happiness feels like, we all know what joy feels like, and we all know what but that it's all up to us then to bring that knowledge into ourselves to create this new self. The third thing that I want you guys to do is to cultivate the vibration, all right? So number one, or number two is visualize. Number three, you're gonna to start to cultivate the vibration. Number one, so I guess 3A, what was a desired feeling? What smell evokes this feeling? What song or sounds can you use that evoke the feeling? What season does the feeling feel like? And you can even describe the perfect day to evoke what that feeling would be. The fourth thing is to start embodying the vibration. This is where you can start to use things as vision boards, to start to pay attention using those new neural pathways within your mind to bring that reality into your existence. You can start to journal some new things about your future self. I've got a few journal prompts here for you guys that are really good that I use that I'm gonna share with you guys. So the first one is, what's the core feeling when I am searching for the achieved desire? Number two, is where else can I manifest that feeling right now to start vibrating at this higher frequency? Number three, how can I refocus my attention on this desire until it arrives? What actions would I take as if it was already accomplished? And number four, this is our journal prompt, is if I am feeling doubt, where is there evidence in my favor to help shift my attitude. Those are four journal prompts that I use quite frequently to try to switch, switch my vibrations. The fifth thing that we're gonna do is we're gonna give appreciation. Deeply feel and give gratitude to all that is happening for us. Giving gratitude to the things in the present moment, it elevates the emotions and brings about a higher frequency also brings about a higher state of being, so you can feel as though the desired effect has already occurred. Number six, keep in mind that it's not enough to just notice that how you've been feeling, how you've been thinking, and how you're behaving. This process that we tell ourselves, we have to face the shadows and drag them out into the light. 
you have to be willing to look at some of the mess, some of the parts of your personality that you don't like so much and bring them up so that you're able to look at them and help them heal. And seven, think about what steps you would normally take when you're really serious about doing something differently. You're gonna separate yourself from the external environment long enough to think about what to do and what not to do. You start to become aware of different aspects of your old self, and then you can start to plan and recreate this new being. And number eight is just to repeat and repeat and repeat. I'm gonna go here and look for any questions you guys have. I hope that that was like super helpful. I'm gonna, I've got a little cheat sheet that has all the different steps for you guys, as well as my journal prompts. So I will send them over to you because I saw you guys all ferociously writing so you guys can see those. I'm just gonna quickly go to the chat and see if there is any questions at all. Any questions you guys have, post them up here and I will get to them. That's our love, it feels, yes, yes, yes. Any questions, any questions? There's a lot, yes, a lot of vibration. Okay, I don't see a tons of this. Um, yes, yes, yes. Okay, I don't see a tons of questions in there right now. Just everybody really wanting to get information on the cheat sheets and the journal prompts and things like that. I will get those to the other superstars and they can get them passed out to you. How does that sound? I will also get the recording of this over to the, um, also to the other superstars as well. Um, you guys can all get started with a great meditation series that was just launched by Beachbody this week. That's a great way to start calming your mind down. Um, I love the, um, uh, what the heck's the app that I like? Uh, Insight app. It's a pretty good app that I like to use for meditations as well. Um, so I hope that that was really, really helpful for you guys. I know everybody else is going to be bringing like the wham, bam, thank you, ma'am, and all the energy to really pump you guys up. But I thought that it would just be really helpful to tell you guys why it's so important to start switching your mindset. So hope you guys all have an amazing evening. Thanks so much for letting me serve you guys tonight. And I hope you have a fantastic week.